you know, what recruiting rules now have they changed for you because of the new circumstances? So right now, the main thing they change is that we can't do any in-person evaluations um, okay. for now until May 31st. Oh, they changed so, it again, huh? Yeah, so we can't, you know, go watch a player at a local park or anything like that. Um, none of that in-person stuff and on-campus visits or anything like that can happen until uh, May 31st at the earliest. Um, okay. That obviously was pushed back not too long ago, um, so it could change again, but right now this is what we're working with. It's, it's yeah. That's the problem. No one knows. Yeah. No one knows. It's, it's just, you know, we all get information whenever the NCAA sends something to the athletic director and then she forwards it to us. And then we, you know, we have weekly staff meetings to kind of go over it. And... Now, do you think they're going to open up? Like usually you guys, division two and one have to stop recruiting. I think it's like August, it's around August 12th, if I, if I can remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, summer's around the 10th, 12th, where you can't go out and watch competition. It's kind of like a two, three week dead period. Or do you think they're going to eliminate that this year and kind of like even division ones in the fall because of what's going on, kind of let them, Hey, you know what, we're just going to open it back up. Like it used to be. Um, I, I don't know, to be honest with you, I don't have the answer for that. Um, I'm sure that's probably something they're going to be talking about um, simply because you never know with everything right now. We don't know if we have a, uh, if we'll have a summer to recruit. Um, yeah. So they very, I mean, the recruiting calendar really is for division ones, um, division two and division three or more lenient with that type of stuff. Um, but I guess at that point, everybody will hopefully, fingers crossed, be back at campus. So. Because of the season off affect mm -hmm. you guys with recruiting, because now you guys have, you know, you're, you have the option, you don't have to, it's not mandatory, correct, to take correct. back your seniors, but also correct. not just your seniors, your juniors, everyone gets a repeat year, correct? Correct, correct, 100%. Um, yeah, so everybody was given their year back of eligibility, understandably so, since, you know, it was cut short. Um, so I guess for the next couple of years, depending on what program envisions and I guess what, what funds really they have available and you know, where they want to put that money, you could be looking at bigger roster sizes for the next couple of years simply because if, you know, for instance, you know, next year I have, I think I have six juniors. Um, if all six juniors decide they you know, want to take advantage and keep, you know, stay here at AIC, that's six people that I thought would be graduating that might not be graduating. So, <laughs> so until, that's so like, until, oh, I just got a Christmas present. <laughs> exactly. So until 2024, it looks like, you know, um, you could see bigger rosters, um, you know, at all schools. And, you know, there have been some schools that said, you know what, unfortunately, we can't honor that extra year here. I think um, Wisconsin just did that. Or they said, you know, you can't do your extra year here. So, they, you know, that does mean the transfer portal is going to be opened up more because, you know, maybe, you know, kids don't want to stay at their current um, school simply because they don't have the program that they want to study for their master's. So, um, you know, I can see a lot of shifting going around for the next couple of years and, and larger roster sizes as a result of this. Where, is there a limit on roster size? Does the NCA say, hey, you have to have so many um, on rosters or you're limited? Or is that just a school by individual school thing? I mean, I think there's really, uh, to start, it's a school thing, um, you know, to have a minimum roster size. Um, I don't know of a lot of schools that put a cap on it, um, but once you hit the playoffs and um, regionals and, and super regionals and all that stuff, that's where the roster size has kind of changed because you can only dress a certain amount of kids. Okay, so what are you doing right now with your kids? How do you keep your college kids motivated? I mean, they just, they just got their, their world torn apart. Mm -hmm. Their school torn apart. I mean, they've got to, I know how heartbroken some of my college kids were, um, yeah. my high school kids right now. What do you do to try to keep their spirits up? I mean, I think a lot of it is what we're doing is we're, we're doing a lot of Zoom calls. You know, okay. we have uh, weekly meetings where all 20, 20 of us get on the, the Zoom and we're able to, to mm -hmm. chit chat. Um, my outfitters this weekend are giving a little um, presentation on energy and, you know, positive thinking and, and what can, that can do for a team. Um, so they're going to present that to the rest of the team. Um, you know, I've been sending them workouts just to kind of like stay involved and just, mm -hmm. you know, to, to kind of focus on what we did in the off season and to, so that we don't lose it coming back in the fall because, you know, it is, it is easy when you're quarantined, you're not allowed to go anywhere to kind of just sit back and, you know, do your online course and, you know, kind of get <laughs> complacent with yourself. So, um, you know, I send out weekly text, just, you know, daily text, basically reminding them, Hey, you know, like, I know this is temporary. Um, you got to think about the bigger picture, you know, when one door closes, another one opens, but you do have to open it yourself. So, you know, keep grinding, keep working, and then hopefully we'll be better than, um, than when we 
and when, when we come back in the fall. That's a great way to look at it. You know, you're kind of telling yeah. them, hey, you've got an extra year to get better. Because right. You got, you're right. Like you've got a red shirt year, you know, which is great. Exactly. That's and so that's what we, you know, anything that we said that it's just like, just work right now is the time to work on your weakest, your weakest aspect of your game. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're outside hit is, is your weakest part of the game, then you should be hitting outside and trying to work on that as much as you possibly can, because normally we would be in season right now. So you wouldn't have a whole lot of time to really, really work on it as much as you would be able to, if you have the next five months off. So. Absolutely. That's awesome advice. I mm-hmm. like that one. That's, I'm going to steal that one from you. That's All right. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the biggest questions I'm getting from my kids, coach, mm-hmm. how much should we bug college coaches? We know everybody's sitting at home. Everybody's quarantined. Um, I mean, I've had a couple of juniors who I thought was a great idea, went to a field, obviously, allowed to be on the field. They weren't breaking right. any rules. Did right. a little video and sent a practice session, put it on their YouTube, you know, like a three-minute little practice workout. Mm-hmm. Simple, very nice. And I said, that's great. Now send that to some college coaches, like yep. once, you know, send that to them in a couple of weeks, do another one. I mean, mm-hmm. what else would you suggest? I mean, you still obviously, as a coach, want to see a player play live. I get that. But right now, how do we stay in contact with you? What's the best way without being annoying? Right. No, I mean, email is always great. Like you said, um, right now we're going to have to evaluate a lot on videos and then hopefully be able to see them in person. Um, so any aspect that you can show your, you know, your different range um, would be great. So like, yeah, those live practice sessions, you know, that'll get us in a, in, in a, in a better position. You know, a video will never say, yes, I'm 100% going to, you know, offer this player a roster spot or a scholarship. Um, but it will put you on the list of, I need to make sure that I go see her in person because I think, you know, from what she's showing me on this video, we could do something with her. She could kind of, I could see her, you know, being a yellow jacket or something like that. So, um, you know, a video is never going to get you a, a yes, but it'll get you a, all right, let's, let's take this to the next step and go see her whenever we're able to. Um, and if that means that we don't recruit this summer, um, maybe that means, okay, hey, you know what, I was impressed by the videos you sent me um, over the last couple of months. Why don't we have a, a time where you can come on campus in the fall? So um, I think kind of the more you put yourself out there because everybody's in the same boat, we're all kind of like, okay, where are we going to go right now? You know, how are we going to compete with, you know, the division ones that at this point are going to be in the same boat. We're all in the same situation right now. So um, yeah, videos, calls, emails, you know, just a little something to say, Hey, you know, a little personal, personal touch goes a long way. And that, you know, that's the same way with coaches too. Now, how often once a week, you know, they don't want to be too, like, my kids are like, I don't want to be annoyed. Right, yeah, once a week is, it works for me, because then it's like, okay, yeah, I remember this kid, she emailed me this time, you know, and I'll be able to kind of go back and track. But now, to that note, this is a great time for, you know, these high school students to really, really narrow down what they want to do at the next level, like, narrow down your college list, because right now, normally they'd be in class all day, and then they'd go to practice, and, you know, then they'd have summer ball and summer practice and all that stuff, but, you know, we do have a lot of extra time for them to really kind of sit down and narrow, and so instead of sending out you know, 100 emails to 100 different colleges, maybe this is your time to, to, to really, you know, decide, oh, I really want to study nursing. Let me narrow down my list and focus on these 20 schools. My kids, I tell them to put a list of 2025 together. I never tell right. my kids to do 100 anyway. I right. think that's over the edge. So you definitely can tell the difference between kids who are mass blasting and kids who are really taking like a, a you know, a 25 approach and really kind of making all of their emails personal. So, um, Personally, I take more interest in those personal ones because if you're personally invested in AIC, then I can be personally invested in you even more as opposed to you just kind of like throwing it, you know, to every single Division II coach in the country and hoping that somebody nibbles a little bit. Now, with this going on, though, I do, I've been telling my kids, hey, you have a list of 25, but if Mm -hmm. you were a junior now and narrowed down your list to 15, I've told them to expand it back to 25 because we don't know what coach might take more kids on with these changes. Right. That's right. A good suggestion. Yeah. I mean, I definitely focus on your 15, but then like keep those, those last 10 in there. So that way it's not, you know, like I said, if, if, if a team, you have to understand a team's roster size could be limited, you know, simply by uniforms. Maybe this, maybe with all of this change and kids going online and, you know, having to give some refunds back, you know, normally they'd be able to be like, Hey, you know what? Athletic director um, Smith, you know, I need six more uniforms. Mm-hmm. you might not be able to do that right now. So you need to kind of like be aware that, you know, people are going to have to start limiting their roster sizes a little bit. And we're not going to be able to have, you know, at least AIC won't be able to have, you know, 30 kids on their roster because, you know, I'm trying to give you the best student athlete experience and what kind of a student athlete experience am I giving you? If I'm saying, Hey, come play for me. Hopefully by your sophomore year, you'll be able to get a uniform. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to think, is there, is there anything else advice that you would give kids on the recruiting process that we haven't talked about? Um, I think at this point, it's just to really kind of try and stay level-headed and, and just remember, like, try and think of the bigger picture. I know right now, I'm sure, you know, high school seniors and juniors are, are kind of like, wow, I'm losing an entire year, you know, a season to be recruited, you know, seniors weren't able to get their final year. Um, and, you know, at this point, there are some late 2020s who are trying to get signed to teams. And I think as long as you're just, you know, staying true to yourself and still reaching out, um, you know, and focusing on school still, because... I'm sure it's way different than being in front of a computer screen than in a classroom. Um, you know, you just got to kind of trust the process and hope everything kind of works out for the best. And if it does, you are a student athlete. So we need to make sure that the fit is perfect for you as a student. And then we can add the athletic part. Hey, I really appreciate your time today. That was of great. Of course. That was awesome.